the MPH Survival Kit. So you're about to start an MPH, you meet me for a cup of coffee and you ask me what advice I might give you and this is what I tell you. You are about to have one of the best years of your life. You're going to make friends with people that you'll be in touch with for decades to come. You're going to be exposed to ideas that are going to blow your mind. So enjoy every moment of it. Savor this time like a fine wine. It might be the last time in your life when your full-time job is to learn and improve yourself. It's the luxury and it's a privilege. So enjoy it. Now you're going to be exposed to a wide range of disciplines and ideas. And when you're in the thick of it, it might not be obvious where you should focus your attention. So I'm going to answer that question for you right now. For most disciplines in public health, you may or may not use the skill set that you learn. You might use health economics. You might not. You might work in maternal and child health, but you might not. But whatever you do, if you're working in public health, you are going to need a strong understanding of epidemiology. Focus on epidemiology. Understand the distribution of disease across different populations and over time. Understanding these different states of health and the drivers of disease and the relationship between the two underpins everything we do in public health. Public health is essentially applied epidemiology. Next, network like crazy. The friends you make in your class will become your colleagues and your professional network going forwards. Also, your tutors and professors will become your friends and part of your professional network. So be proactive. It's not just about having a network so that you can find a job, although that's part of it. But once you're working in public health, those friends represent an extension of your capabilities. If I've got a good friend with a deep knowledge about human rights and health, then that's a person that I can quickly reach out to when my work remit overlaps with that area. My next piece of advice is don't be afraid of statistics. A lot of people going into an MPH think that the quantitative side of things is going to be difficult. People get nervous about stats. The good news is I have got loads of videos on my YouTube channel and at learnmore365.com that can help you with that stuff. It's not that hard. You're going to be fine. Now, the next piece of advice is this. At the end of your MPH, you're probably going to be asked to do a thesis or a capstone project of some sort. It usually involves research. Here's my advice for that. Keep it simple. Your professors and lecturers aren't expecting you to do some world-shattering research. They want to check that you've understood the scientific method and that you can present your findings in a sensible way. So keep your research question simple and make sure that you've demonstrated an ability to apply the scientific method, that you've reflected on research that other people have done, that you've built upon that, and that you're able to present sensible conclusions and recommendations. Now, when it comes to doing a literature review, I didn't have access to Nested Knowledge when I was an MPH student. Nested Knowledge is an online platform that makes doing a literature review an absolute pleasure. I didn't have access to it when I did my MPH. I wish that I did. I absolutely love them. There's a link in the description below. Please click on that, check them out. You will not be sorry. Nested Knowledge sponsor this channel and I'm hugely grateful for their support. Now, the next video that I want you to watch is one about what epidemiology is. So check that out. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Share this video with others if you think they'll like it. If you write a comment below, I'll try and respond. Until next time, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.